Hello, and welcome to Ruse Cues number two. In this one, you're going to hear a conversation between myself and Krista Weiler. Krista is a second mom of sorts to me. When I was growing up, she was, unfortunately for her, my babysitter. But since then, our two families have remained really close, and she continues to be one of the most important role models uh, in my life. She also happens to be an elementary school teacher, which I'm sure you can imagine was not the easiest thing to be over the last year. This conversation we had uh, was actually a few months ago, so some of the policies that we discuss or some of the things going on at the time may seem slightly dated, but I still wanted to share this because I think it's really interesting to get an inside perspective from an educator actually dealing with many of the things that we heard about on the news, but I know that I personally am not friends with too many teachers, so I actually did not know a ton about what was going on, so this was uh, really eye-opening for me. So, uh, without further ado, here is my conversation with Krista Weiler. Okay, I do have a quiet voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you, yeah, if you have a quiet voice, feel free to inch closer a little bit. But just you don't, you don't need to eat it like that. Like you know, on podcasts, some people are just like, <laughs> and yeah, you don't need to be quite there. <laughs> um, all right, all right. Hello, Krista. Hello. This feels uh, like a radio show. It, it kind of is a radio show, I guess, just without the radio and without the listeners. <laughs> Um, virtual cheers. Cheers. Boop. Um, Chris is drinking a very expensive bottle of wine and I am drinking a normal, uh, normally priced whiskey. <laughs> um, so you are a teacher. I am. And I wanted to ask you uh, about pre COVID, um, back before this was even a thing. How are you feeling about your job? Um, and before COVID, before COVID, before COVID, it was definitely more manageable. I could, I, I always put in more than 40 hours a week, but I would go early and, um, get work done. And if, and I might stay late, but I was able to leave work at work, like in the building. Um, so that was very nice. So I had more of a balance of life. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. And so now after COVID I spend, um, at least 14 hours a day working. That's insane. It is insane. Is that five days a week, six days, seven? I work seven days a week. Ugh. Yeah. But um, the 14 hours is definitely more Monday through Friday. Right. Right. Um, and to be clear, um, just remind me, uh, what grade do you teach? I teach third. Third. Okay. I thought so. I was either third or fourth. Mm-hmm. Um, and have you taught third your entire teaching career? Nope. I taught, um, so my student teaching was in four, a fourth, f- fifth split and then third, but I also, I've taught fourth as well. Okay, yeah. cool. Cool. Yeah. Just wanted to clarify that up and you're still teaching third grade this year, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, do you remember, uh, your first thought of like, like once we start hearing on the news about the virus and all of that, do you remember your like first time where you thought to yourself, I think this, like this could impact my work. Like no one had told you you have to, but you feel like, do you remember thinking about that? Not too much. My, I remember my boss was saying like, yeah, we're going to be going to digital learning. And I mean, we didn't really know what that meant. But then when we got the information, it was like a week and a half before spring break. It was like another, it was a Friday the 13th that we found out that we're like, you will be digital teaching next week. So it was a Friday and starting Monday, you'll be digitally teaching. And, um, we're like, what does that even mean? Yeah. Like we, we had to invent it. Right. Now the concept doesn't really, I mean, I've taken online college courses. That is not virtual teaching. It's an entirely different ball game. You guys were literally like inventing as you went. It seemed. Yeah. And last year in the spring was more like college online classes. We were just posting things. Right. And we would host Zooms for like social, um, social things. So like, it would be like games anytime we were online or maybe I would read aloud. But any of my teaching, I would either videotape myself or just assign things with directions. And this year I'm on with the kids. Right. All right. the time. Yeah. That sounds very, very fun. Um, when So uh, kind of like you're saying that, that around that Friday the 13th in March um, was when my work um, – got shut down you know i i was working in uh, concessions and catering and all oh, that. that's right and i had a concert um i was supposed to work the the tool concert 
Um, and I was up in Portland that like that week and I was going to drive, I was going to take the bus down that day. And the concert was later that day. Um, and we just start hearing, you know, events canceled and Cape Brown canceled events of like two fifty and over the night before. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, the concert's definitely over two fifty. I, I assume work's canceled, but like my managers are like, I don't know. I don't know. And then for like the next three days, it's like, all right, we're switching to this. We're not doing this. This is shut down. And then they're like, you're not coming back until further notice. Um, wow. but right before that at work, it was already politicized, like off the bat. I work with like, I worked with a decent amount of conservative people and they were just going, we have to put gloves on and bag food. Like they were fucking pissed about that. Oh, wow. Um, and so I'm just curious, you, you, a lot of the people you around you during work are young kids, like eight year olds who are probably very affected by their parents. Was it politically charged immediately in your classroom? Were there questions about that? I think everyone was just in shock. Last year, I we just everyone had to go with the flow, right? Like, and last also last year, the parents had to really step up and do homeschooling, whether they were working from home or not. Um, the nice thing about it being more like college digital learning or online learning was that if they couldn't do anything until after their work day, they could do that. So like right. the kids could do work like dinner time until bedtime yeah. and still like be on time and be ready for the next day. We're now because we're either. So I'm in person with them a couple hours a day with some of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll talk but, about that. Yeah. In a bit. Yeah. yeah. But um, so, yeah. So they um, it was easier to keep up with in that way. But parents were definitely you would hear things like, oh, I knew my kid was ADHD, but whoa, they're ADHD. <laughs> like, like, I can't keep them focused. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, and that was one of my 19, yeah. you know? like, <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's your kid. And that's your kid, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess, yeah, let's talk about kind of what, what you just mentioned. Um, so you teach at a private school. Mm-hmm. Um, so what, in our area, I think all the public schools are still all virtual as far as I know. They are. Um because you guys kind of have your own rules, you're dealing with a weird hybrid system where some kids come in some of the time and then everyone also does virtual work. Yeah, it's really crazy. And I'm trying to find out why we're able to even. I mean, because I think with the metrics, we shouldn't be able to. In Clackamas County, there's several schools that are full-time, up to 20 kids in their classroom. Um who are getting COVID and they're not reporting. Um, Like the school's not reporting it? Yes. Um, And I don't know who to contact because, um, um, and the archdiocese in charge of all the Catholic schools is encouraging everyone to be in person. And so it's created this competitive nature. People are switching schools if they don't like how you're doing it or if you're not in person. My school is, there is some rule that we can have limited in person for two hours a day. So I teach in the morning at 8.30. I start with my whole class. From 8.30 to 9, I teach a lesson. Then from 9 to 9.20, I tell the kids that are staying home what they're going to start their day with and what their schedule will be like for three hours. And then I get kids in my class. I'm already at work. Um, Then I get kids from 9.35 until 11.50. I have them in class. I have to wear a microphone and a mask and... (laughs) Um, it's just crazy. So not wait, all wait, of the wait. kids are coming in. 10 yeah, are coming so, in. So break it down. So, sorry, I'm just so, yeah, I, no, I so, don't, so, so at the first, the first chunk is a first group of kids that you do the cycle and then, and then kids will come in and then they'll leave and then new kids will come in. Or, so my class, so they can choose whether they want to be in person or not. Okay. So I have 10 kids that come in and six kids at home. I only have a class of 16 this year. I have all 16 in the morning from 8.30 to 9. Okay. From 9 to 9.20, I have just the six that are staying home. What and I explain what they're going to do. They're getting ready and coming to school. So then... The Wait, ten, but I thought they were there. No, they're not at school. Oh, they're not I'm, out- I'm doing it all from the computer okay, in the morning. Okay, okay. Then the drop-off situation, each kid has to say that they don't have COVID symptoms and they have to get a temperature check before they can come into the building. Right. So they come in and I... I mean, I have them do like a morning work type thing till they all get there. Um, But I have them for a little over two hours. We have to schedule our recess time because we can't be out with other classes. Like at the same time, Uh, they can't use the playground equipment because we don't have time to wipe it down between each class. Um, It's 
crazy. And then so they go they home. Do? Are they just I have standing in circles outside. <laughs> My class likes soccer, oh, so they cool. play a lot that's of soccer cool. or cool. jump rope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, soccer's kind of problematic. And in if COVID I too, right? <laughs> well, and they're playing on the pavement, so like I play with them yeah. most of the time because then they're like, "Yeah, teacher's playing." Yeah. Um, but then we go. Uh, so then we're when they go home about noon. Um, I get about a half hour of lunch, and then I'm on. From what do you do during your lunch? Eat. <laughs> <laughs> Eat and cry. <laughs> Eat and cry. So I sometimes will go home during that time, but usually I stay because then I'm online from 1 to 3.15 with all of the kids that were at home okay. all day. So I can actually teach content. And then the ones that were at school have different jobs that are they don't need me for necessarily. So they're, are they, they're doing work in school, but you're not teaching them. They're just like doing... School. Yeah, I mean, I have like they do keyboarding classes, gotcha. and they have Spanish and art oh, so and do PE. They go, they go to a separate room while you teach the online. No, course? they go home. They go home at noon, and oh, then they, go they entirely home. yeah, I'm they sorry. go home. Okay, no, that's you. okay. They're only allowed to be there for two hours a day. I see. Um, and then I have a little bit of a break and a dinner, and then I work until ten p.m. What are you doing when you're working? You grading I'm or planning? I don't grade that often. I've got to catch up because report cards are coming out. But I'm mostly planning and my teaching is different because I'm not able to always have, I can't teach them everything in the two hours I have them right. every day. So I have to make like Google Slides that also have my voice in them. And so I'm like teaching like through a slide for some other assignments just Great. in order to meet all of the standards and what they're supposed to te- uh-huh. learn in third grade. Uh-huh. But right now we have um, a second grade teacher quit. There's a student teacher in there. So there's two teachers, me and one other, helping her learn to be a teacher. How old is she? So is she younger than me? She's actually 26. She went okay. back to school. She has a marine biology degree. Oh. Um, she went back to school to be a teacher. Poor thing right now. Yeah, um, so I'm creating all the language arts curriculum for second grade um, as well as third grade. And, um, and then our first grade teacher just quit. Oh, so we don't know what we're going to do, <laughs> honestly, like how we'll, we'll survive. I mean, is, and are, I, I imagine people are looking for jobs a lot right now. No, but in te- I was going to say, but in teaching, no, especially no in one... private, because going in is risking your life. I mean, right. My third graders, half of them can't keep their little noses covered Uh and i'm just like you guys are gonna make me sick and And i got sick last week i had to do a digital week because i got sick from them and if you have any symptom you have to stay out and go get a covid test so so when when you get sick does none of the kids show up or do they get a sub there's no subs so did they all the just prince, stay home for the week? They or? stayed home. Two of them wanted to come in. And then when I told them, like, you're the only ones that will come in and the principal will be your teacher, they're like, oh, nobody else is coming. I guess we'll stay home. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the parents just really want to not be responsible for their kids. Jeez. Um, how, how do you cope in the free time you have? Like, what? what There's what been a lot of crying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I... I feel like I don't cope. I just work. Yeah. Um, I love, I need CBD for sleeping because it's hard to shut your mind off when you're working from home and doing so much from home. Like my bedroom is half bedroom, half office. Right. So it's literally in my face yeah. <laughs> what I have to do. Taunting right? you as you try to sleep. Yeah. And I'm also actually taking um, six college credits right now, which... What are you taking? Um, I'm getting my special ed certification okay so um that has taken a backseat and my thanksgiving break will be doing a whole term's worth of work basically (laughs) you're ever playing catch up yeah yeah Yeah. what um what has it been like and i'm not calling you the o word but just uh my mom is uh not the most tech savvy you guys aren't old but you're older yeah um has it been difficult to like, have you been having to like learn how to use a software and then like teach through it, or is it? Been um, kind of I feel like you? I've done pretty well with that. I I um I helped find the software we were buying, so I was pretty comfortable with cool. it myself. Yeah, yeah, I I'm good with technology. I did buy a new Mac book this year nice. and so switching from that from the hp that I had was a little tricky. Right, I'm um, just learning the system, but yeah. other than that, I'm. 
I mean, I use my computer no, you, all you the seem, time. You've always been a little more like up to date than I think a lot of people. Yeah, age. your mom just had a really big break before she went back to school. But yeah, no, totally. No, I just we've uh, we've been trying to I've been trying to break down a lesson of iMovie with her for a while. <laughs> I feel got like <laughs> I feel like my phone is more I'm more handicapped with that than a computer, that's fair, that's fair. right? Like no, my totally, kids, totally. I'm just like, how do you do this? And what's like, how do you know when you get a Snapchat? I mean, like I. Yeah. There's so many social platforms that I, that's where I get lost on my phone totally. mostly, but on the computer, I'm on it all the time. It's like, yeah, with yeah me. I mean, it's like the opposite of me being like, like, how do I use an encyclopedia or something? And just, I get it. Like, <laughs> how do I not, talk to a child? Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not trying to, trying to roast anybody mm. who's older, but just, it, it, I would be so, if I was a teacher who was like in, uh, you know, two decades older than I am now and had to like learn how to use all the shit that I use, I it would seem like a nightmare. It just seemed like I was and learning and teaching at the same time. That's basically why the second grade teacher quit. She was already like two years from retiring and she's just like, oh, I can't do this. I'm out. And yeah, she's basically, I'm out and I'm making myself self worry about getting sick if I have to come into work. And for it was hard. I mean, I created my whole schedule for online learning all summer. I worked on it, like how I'll make it work and have reading groups online. And then I had a week's notice to like, you're coming back next week for two hours a day. And I had to rework my whole schedule. So, um, and it's not actually meeting the kids needs as much like having to have some in and some out. I can't have reading groups and I can't have, we were having like social lunch groups and I can't do that either. Um, because otherwise, I mean, I don't have any time to myself anyways, but right. I don't know how to meet all of their needs right now. Yeah. And it's hard because there are needs and I have a pretty low group of readers and I like that's the special ed teacher part of me. I really want to help them right. and I can't put in the time I'd like to for just them. Yeah. Yeah. So. That that was kind of a question I wanted to talk to you about is, um, yeah, I know teachers every year probably deal with students who are dealing with educational problems, emotional problems, maybe stuff at home. I don't know. Um, what's it been like to emotionally like kind of process like you are less able to help kids than you normally are? Like, has that been hard for you? It is really hard. And it's, and it's hard because that's where it's not equitable for the kids that are at home. Like if you have both parents working, you're not going to get help or even the parent like looking to see if you have anything due. I right. have a couple families that are old fashioned Catholics that have one with like five or six boys for their kids. Wow. Like that house is always busy. And then another one whose first language isn't English and there's eight children in that home. I have the third born. And a lot of times her older sisters can help her, but that's a busy house. Yeah. Yeah. And just even the Wi-Fi that they need <laughs> to yeah. have like all right. of their kids online. Like I have three siblings watching Netflix. I can't really. <laughs> yeah. Or are you, I hear another teacher teaching her sibling next oh, no. to her, <laughs> even with her like headphones. And I didn't things, think about that. On. Yeah. If everyone's te- learning, they're learning at the same time. They're all in the school. The same- oh, geez. Yeah. They're yeah. all in school at the same time. And those families honestly do amazing for what they've got. But it's not ideal for the kids. No, I mean, yeah. I like quiet when I'm studying. There's no way they ever get that. Right. No. Not, I mean, one will even all. be like, "Here's my baby brother," and now, <laughs> like, 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 him on the and then she's yeah. like, "Be right back." And so, like, <laughs> you know, shooing him out of the room and then coming back. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 What's a? Uh, I guess speaking of that, what's been what's been like the funniest parts of webcam teaching? Like, has there been any silly? Incidences? I laugh at them all the time. I mean, I feel like I do in class, anyways. I. I um I feel like I build pretty good relationships with my kids because good. that's important to me. I talk to them like how I'm talking to you, yeah. minus the swear words. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just I don't, I can't think of a specific no, event no, right now. But spot. they I just they make me no, it's okay. Yeah, they just make me laugh all the time. Just things they say or I mean they're pretty darn honest in third grade. You know what's happening. Yeah, <laughs> you know in their lives. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, they're just like, I just got up and they're like, I can tell. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Just, and even like, you know, a daily, Miss Weiler, I have to go to the bathroom. I'm like, you don't have to tell us all. You can just go. <laughs> You're at your house. Cam. Yes. Oh, so I'm like, funny. you can turn your video off. If you want me to know, you can send me a chat. Yeah. Like, you know, but they're, they're just so used to like. I'm their teacher, the so laurels. I've got to ask to yeah. use the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. They're pretty. I mean, they're 
they're adorable, really. Yeah. No, third grade's a, a fun year. You're kind of coming into yourself a little bit. Yeah. Early. I mean, the most annoying part, but that's in person, too, is like, how do you do that when you just explained it for 10 minutes? Right. Because it's harder <laughs> to explain it online. I am lucky this year I have a document camera that hooks to my laptop. Okay. So I can actually write and show them how uh, to do things. Yeah, yeah, and cool. that's that's been um, that's been fun. But I've had to change like lots of my activities. We're studying Native Americans and usually they pick a tribe that they like and they will build a Native American house for that tribe. Like oh, cool. whether it's like an igloo because they're an Arctic tribe or um, an adobe because they're a Southwestern tribe, like because we do the whole United States. Very but cool. this year I just have to create new ways of like you could build a house, but if you don't have that in your house, maybe you make a movie or you try to dress like them and act something out. So I'm having to, it's been good for me to be more creative. Yeah. But totally. it's also, yeah, but it's also, I have to recreate every lesson. Right. Right. That's pretty tricky. Yeah. Um, what have been some of your fun, favorite lessons you've come up with? I think the native American thing sounds really cool. Yeah. I, um, I also came up with, um, let's see, what was the one that they had the choice? There were, I, there's just, I just have come up with more choice activities so they could write. Um, I, I focus a lot on kindness week. We, I'm, on the racial equity committee as well. So I'm really into... What's that look like at your school? Or is it... Well, it's funny because the principal comes from a um, public school background. So he's like, we have to be careful how we say things. We shouldn't just say Black Lives Matter. I'm like, no, because that's the movement. So I argue a lot. Um, But what I've brought in this year is I have a whole list of different holidays celebrated by different religions and cultures. So we just did a big Diwali um oh, project that we're actually i have to help put it together next week but we had all the kids bring in a different color and shape of something we're making a big rangoli oh. um like the thing that they put they would make with sand with in sand. front of their yeah, doors yeah. yeah so um so i'm trying to facilitate some whole school projects with that and teaching so that just to make a everyone aware of other cultures um right to make them more accepting because there's a lot of just we're Catholic and this is the only way mentality and, and not all the kids that go there are Catholic. There's a eighth grader who's Jewish actually. So I want to make sure that they feel important and special also, but also just to open up their minds. Um, It also looks like we've gotten some donations for money to make our library more diverse, which is awesome. Excellent. Yeah. Um, And I, I use those all the time. I, um, I haven't, because it's also divided politically, our school. I haven't said much yet about the new election, but I'm saving that for the inauguration day and bringing up that Kamal is our first um, black woman that's a vice president, but also Asian, right? Like like all of those things I'm I'm going to bring up, but I didn't right after the election because there might have been some sensitive families. Has any of your kids talked about stolen election or anything like that? Um, this class hasn't, but last year I definitely had kids that want, were for Trump. Yeah. I mean, they're always with their parents. Right. Of course. Right. Of right. Course. Um, this year I've heard more anti-Trump. Yeah. Um, and you know, secretly I'm like, yes, but I'm like, we're not talking politics. Right. We can talk what facts. Do you, what, what do you say to them? Is that I usually say, say that I said, we can talk facts. Like, yes, Trump is our president right now. Right. <laughs> yes. He lost. I mean, like, yeah. I will, I am happy to talk facts because they, they should know facts, yeah. Yeah. but I don't, t- I don't take sides at of all. Of course. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it has to be a, a fine line when you're teaching. Anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not my job. Yeah. Of course. And they're going to, why try to, I mean, it would hurt their feelings right, at their right. age, right? If you're just like, yeah. Trump sucks. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Inauguration day is good. That's like a political lesson. Yeah. It's not politicized. It's just you're talking about the And you can bring up all the of the, the history of our country, right. which is something that I teach every year anyways, which is not a common thing for a third grade teacher, but I believe in making sure we're aware of our history as far as white America yeah. and how we've treated other populations. So, right. um, I mean, even Thanksgiving this week is going to be about this is what our world was like when this happened. And we did um, Columbus Day. I did do Indigenous Peoples Day and told them why. Um, And some of them still argued like their families. They are very much like this is Columbus Day. Um, But I'm like it. Some people still call it that. And it hasn't been voted in our whole country to make it Indigenous Peoples. But this is why it's trying to change. So how do you talk about stuff like uh mass uh 
rape and the cutting beheading of indigenous people to eight year olds like how because I, I think it's amazing that what you're doing is um you're trying to give them a more well-rounded uh idea of america mm-hmm. uh but a lot of that involves a rated r history. yeah i definitely can't right. go that detailed yeah. um but we do talk about slavery and okay. what that means and that those people aren't free and um and that bad things happen. But, and I do say kill, like people were killed, but I don't go into details. Right, right. Yeah. No, obviously, I, I would I mean, never, but they're familiar shouldn't. with war. Third grade boys are all about the war, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, just like, no, they, they, if you didn't cut, get enough gold, they'd cut your hands off and you don't really <laughs> want to go into it. Right. Yeah. right. I don't, yeah. yeah. So I don't get detailed. Um, and I always encourage them if you have more questions, you can ask me. Right. But you can also ask your parents. Maybe you could research with them because I don't want them just doing their own Internet searches, which they know how to do in third grade. I mean, now I can't even imagine. Oh, yes. So so I do have a funny story that I probably shouldn't say on record, but um, about a search that happened. It's okay. (laughs) Up to you. Up to you. I won't make you. (laughs) We can save it for off off the air. (laughs) Um, yeah, I think I just think I I just was curious about the this aspect of your teaching because like I remember I think it was third grade it may have been fourth but we did Oregon Trail you know colonial thing mm-hmm. and like you know it's like we got black and brown kids in this school in this class who are like I'm a shop owner and white girls who are like I'm a blacksmith and it's like no the fuck you're not <laughs> right? none of you would be that but and I I just think I it's think it's so, important to tell them right about, yeah. it's so wrong. I, I think you're trying to do the right thing, but like including everyone in a false reality is it's like, yeah, we all ju- the colon the colonists were just all pals with everybody and the gender and racial relations. Were right. All good. And like, Thanksgiving's like they just all wanted to be pals. Right. Yeah. Like, no, that's not the history of Thanksgiving. Um, I I definitely tell them how it was. And even. I mean, there's a lot of past that isn't just prejudice toward the color of your skin, but women. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, women haven't been allowed to do many things, and I can get all fired up about that. So right. um, I I would tell them, like, I would be angry. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 And I can see why, like, in the story Mulan, why she pretended to be a man. Like, she needed to, like, she wanted to save her father, right? Like, there's lots of, there's lots of reality that they should know. Right. Even if it's not until sixth grade that they hear it again, hopefully they'll remember like, oh, yeah, Miss Weiler said something about that. Right. Yeah. You know, just planting seeds that well, I mean, I was thinking the other day about um, some lessons that like Miss Lane had taught about writing and about like certain aspects. And like um, I was like, oh, yeah, I still I still think about that and still use that today. And I was four, 14, 15 years ago. Yeah. So and I just hope for like I, I because I like the social emotional teaching as well. You know, I, you know, third graders are also very good if I make a mistake pointing it out. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, like, Miss Weiler, you already told us that. Or I can't <laughs> see it. It's not on the screen. And I'm like, oh, remember, I'm human. Humans make mistakes. No, because you're not. then you're when. Miss Weiler. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but then I can use that if they make, remember, you're human too, you know, like, because yeah. kids get so easily embarrassed and anxious if they're right. on the other end of that so yeah yeah let's just say it like it is <laughs> totally has that been something that's hard on webcam because i've always like i've heard that a lot of webcam teachers have been doing like random calling and stuff and i think it would be worse on webcam than in person to like get the answer wrong or like fuck up. yeah i'm not a i don't um i don't cold call is what that's called when you just randomly right. call on kids yeah. unless it's like a small group reading group because we have to practice reading totally but i do have one and even a small group that will say no thank you and so i just honor that and move on like if he's feeling shy or whatever um it is hard because there's little things you would do in class like if a kid kept blurting out or something you would just walk by them and whisper like stop blurting out (laughs) like or you know like pay attention or something where you can't quietly do that without everyone noticing so you just have to be like remember everyone (laughs) Everyone. You need to raise your hand, not just unmute when you feel like it. Yeah. Um, Are there blurters? Are there webcam blurters? Oh, yeah. And they're really good at that mute button. They'll be like, ha, 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 ha. And then they mute themselves. <laughs> <laughs> or like, bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm like, I know who you are, even though I don't sometimes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's so- oh, because you can see who's unmuted, but they 
they get a kick out of just yeah but sometimes they're and- so fast you don't because you don't see them unmute and mute and i'll be like was that him no i can't tell and I'll be like, do we need to have a conversation with parents? And then you see the one with their eyes go wide. <laughs> oh, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I know. <laughs> funny. Yeah. Jump cut. So that was different too this year, right? Like I ended the year with kids I already knew well from being in class with them for, right. for many yeah. months. Yeah. This year I had to start not knowing. the. Gr- I mean, I, at private school, you kind of know kind of, kids. Yeah. But they haven't been in your class, right. so um, it was really good that I've been online so much for them because yeah. I've got I've built those relationships. Yeah. How do you How did you start out? Like, because you've you've got such a great personality, and I think it really like I'm sure it shines on webcam. But I, uh, <laughs> that sounds weird. But it's, I'm <laughs> sure it's uh, but but like uh, you can meet you in person and be like, oh, she's warm, she's like she's loving, she's got my back. How How did you try to recreate that on a digital screen? I think by just giving them time to speak and get to know them. And, um, you know, we don't have show and tell in third grade, but, but if they have something to show like their cat, (laughs) because they do, um, you know, I like, tell me about it. Like, you know, tell us all about it. So giving them an opportunity to have a voice, but also, um, sharing with them just my realities too. I do get comments sometimes. Some parents will email and say, oh my gosh, I don't know how you're so patient. (laughs) And some trying to tell me, like, did you know that you could mute them all on Zoom? (laughs) And I'll be, I do know that. But in third grade, we also have to learn to not blurt out on our own, right? Like, so, like, you're not teaching them a lesson if you're just muting them every time. And that's, that's not learning. That's not learning. That's that's controlling, and that's not my job. I mean, to some degree, we have to have control. <laughs> you got to control on. But they have to learn bit. how to not shout out because I don't. I can't do that when I get them in school. I can't be like mute. <laughs> yeah, I pretend that I can, and that's why I have fun with them too. I'm like, I have my remote. Mute, 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 <laughs> and they think it's hilarious. That's but, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you do that virtually also? You're like, I, have. I know the real one, but my <laughs> fake one's out too, so you better be. <laughs> yeah, not as much, but yeah. In, yeah, yeah. in person, I pretend to mute them. That's fun. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, has your school given any indication as to, I mean, obviously we're in the worst uh, COVID rates that our country's seen ever, which is mm-hmm. hard. I, the other day I went on, I don't know if you go on Google and just type in like coronavirus stats. The, the... Oh, I get texts every okay. day from some yeah, place. Google, yeah, Google will have like um, the chart, you know, and like, about a month ago, you know, we had this kind of mountain shape from June, and now it's like above that. Well, it, it doesn't even look like a mountain. You can't even tell it's, yeah. the, it's the mountain that that used to be. Like it's just like the a, a hill at the base of a mountain, which yes. is the mountains now. It just it blows my That's mind. That's why I don't under I don't understand, and I keep asking. I keep asking, and I don't know who to ask to say why are private schools allowed to be in person. And what can we do to make them not be? Because yeah, jump cut. <laughs> I think I think uh, the way you're teaching is the way that private private schools should be taught. Because obviously, you can't bring religion into public schools, which I agree with entirely. Especially you know, prayer and all. I mean, that stuff. I hope that when I'm back in public, I can bring in um, world. Yeah, I, I just I feel and like that should too. still be taught. Like. Without any do- indoctrination. Yeah, you're not. I'm not trying to make you Jewish, but this is what Hanukkah is about. Why not right. learn their history too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe and why learn they why there's it. only uh, you have what 14 million Jewish people on Earth anymore, and so like learn like backtrack and stuff, and yeah, yeah, yeah break down, talk about uh, you know uh, the, like Muslims and 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 the Islam faith and how 40 years ago the idea of like the stereotype of, like, a man in a turban being a terrorist, scary to America, right? didn't exist. Like, and, and now I feel like we we just think, like, their culture is that they bomb people and they hate women and stuff. And it's like, no, like, you have to look at the revolutions that occurred in the 70s and 80s and what transformed. But even now, certain- look at Malala. Like, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, like, it's just, yeah, I feel like a lot of, especially Western cultures, like, we have this perception that everywhere else is the way it's been and that's the way it's always been so especially if somewhere is like dangerous or scary we just assume they're dangerous yeah and, scary and i people. try to even have the same attitude and tell my students like america's young still that's yeah. why we're stupid like we haven't we haven't learned all that we're not we're not learning the lessons from other countries like we should we um we're doing it on our own and in our own time and that sucks because so many have gone before us and 
have taught us the way that we could be. But. Right, right. Yeah, we are. We are. A oh. young nation constantly righting our wrongs and wronging our rights. I know. <laughs> I know. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, Krista. You're welcome. This, uh, this was really fun. Uh, <laughs> I won't put you on the spot, but I would just ask one last question. Um, like moving forward, uh, what advice would you give to your fellow teachers, your fellow, uh, instructors of the world? Um, lean on each other and share your stuff. I mean, um, there's this great group page on Facebook called Bitmoji for educators, Bitmoji craze for educators. And it started with like, let's make Bitmoji classrooms and throw yourself in it. Yeah. And, but it's become this site where teachers were like, I created this great Google slide. Here you go. Like, it's not like I'm not trying to profit. I'm trying to share. Right. And it's become this awesome site where I've shared things. I've, I get things and download them all the time. And sometimes you have to change them for your own class, but it's been, it's been amazing. And I think if you're sharing and giving with each other, then like lean on each other and don't recreate the wheel by yourself. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Krista. Huge shout out to Krista for that conversation and a huge shout out to educators in general, just in awe of the work y'all do. Uh, Amazing stuff. So, Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back next week with an episode of Fickle Future, but as a bit of a sneak peek into the next Ruse Cues, I can tell you I'm kind of doing a 180 from this episode, and I'm actually going to be talking with Krista's youngest daughter about starting high school in the pandemic. So be on the lookout for that. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!